I was just saying that we have three people not able to make it tonight, Richard, Hannah, and Bev. So there will be hopefully seven of us. And um, we'll just get on with things. I think we have four right now. We have seven. Um, hi, Laura. Hi, everyone. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, you're here to to do your usual, Laura, not necessarily to need to speak to us now. Um, I could make some brief announcements at your discretion, but mostly I'm here to listen. Why don't you go ahead and make the announcements? Sure. Um, well, the first big one people may have seen in the paper that Prospect Place, uh, which is the old former nursing home property, uh, did get funded by the state. Um, that was the last piece of financing that we were waiting for. So we are trying to move that into construction beginning this summer, hopefully. So, woo! <laughs> um, one of the other things we're doing, courtesy, thanks very much to Gwen and Edgar in advance, is trying to put together a few kind of tenant input sessions, one at Meadowbrook, one at Hampshire Heights, to help us design some of the interior amenity spaces um, at that property. Um, so we're looking forward to that. And... I think we may end up in this upcoming CPA round and then again in the fall for the building at Crafts Avenue. And uh, Bill did a presentation for you all a little while ago about that one. So that's kind of, you know, more in planning, not so far along as uh, Prospect Place. And then 23 Laurel Street, uh, we're working toward a construction close and beginning construction in April. So lots happening in Northampton. That's it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank sure. you very much. Yeah. So you are you're you're having having these listening sessions in order to get folks who've lived in yeah. moderate income housing yeah. what their, what, what their yeah. ideas are. One of the kind of inherent challenges in our work is we tend to be building housing for people we don't know who they are yet. So we can't really ask them exactly what they might want and need in that housing, um, but we can pull, you know, pull from folks who are living in similar situations to just get some general information about what might be useful for families. Mm -hmm. That's a, such a great idea. All right, thank you, Laura. Okay, thank you. All right, we need to go to the minutes, um, minutes of January 8th. I hope people have read them and if you have any comments, suggestions for corrections, or if not, if somebody wants to make a motion to up uh, to um, adopt them, go ahead. So moved. Second. Se did someone say second? I I don't know, but you are, so that's what Oh, I mean. Carmen, uh, I thought you seconded. <laughs> yeah, I thought oh, that's no. what you meant. No, I didn't. I okay. second. All right, so let's, so we have to go around. All right, so Gwen and Edgar, you already made your vote. I say yes. Ace? Yes. Gordon? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And Spencer, you weren't here last time, right? So Correct. you could so have I'll stayed stay. if you want. Yeah. All right, so the minutes have been approved and adopted. Um, all right, thank you. So let's discuss our ideas about the Regional Developer Conference. Um, I have a couple of just pieces of information to throw into the ring around conversation. One is that I, I, I had a brief conversation with the East Hampton uh, Chair of their Housing Partnership who said that such a kind of a meeting had taken place a number of years ago, definitely before my time. So at least five or six years ago, if not more. And it was very informative and they'd be interested in being a part of any kind of informational um, kind of meeting that we have around um, developers and soliciting their ideas. Then when we got the email from Bev around not attending tonight, she said she had been thinking about the developer conference and wanted to relay to us that she feels like it would be better to start small, start with a few people rather than make it a big thing and sort of see what feedback and information we get from there and go from there. Um, 
I, I personally am much more comfortable with that idea of starting small. I mean, I have had been thinking over the past month, why couldn't we invite some developers to attend this meeting and give us some initial ideas? That would help us um, know um, what other kinds of things we need to know. It would help us know some stuff that we don't even know we don't know and what else we might need to know and where we go from there. So start it as a seed rather than something big and then um, revisit how that's gonna inform where, what we're gonna do and where we're gonna go with that. So I wanted to open that discussion up to people, see what you think. Um, I've been having the same thought over the last month as, um, well, for one, we have one of our biggest players on the phone with us here every month, right? who is more than willing to answer any and all questions we have to get started with and, 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 and often does, um, that, and I'm, I feel like I'm still very new to this group. So um, the idea, the thought, as the more I thought about like pulling together multiple towns and finding a location and then it becomes a thing and then do you invite the public and then and then and then and then and then, and then um, I started thinking along those same lines, like couldn't we just maybe just um, exactly what you just said, invite a few mm -hmm. to join us and, you know, I think we know what we want to ask mm -hmm. um and then my other question was <clears throat> once at once we speak to the developers and we ask them what the barriers or however the phrasing is um what do we do what do we then do with that information i mean right um Okay, so 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 that's a legitimate question. Let me go around and see what other people are thinking, and um, then then we'll come back to that. Other thoughts? Gordon has his hand up. Yeah. Go oh, Gordon, hi. Sorry. Hi. Um, yeah. I mean, so starting small certainly another way to to think about this and do this. I mean, and I think that with the East Hampton. Uh, housing partnership person was referring to was the one that's probably been more than seven or eight years ago that we did this in mm -hmm. it was at the the, uh, the art gallery um on right on main street that we did it um i didn't remember if we invited the other we must have invited the other housing partnerships but certainly i think what we need to answer first is what are we trying to get from this and as i recall the whole discussion around or the idea of doing a um, developer conference was to build a case for the city to agree that we really should start funding in um, the the uh, housing trust, um, and so it's at that. So th if that's you know th what we do with that information, maybe that answers what we do with the information. It's like we if we see that there's a lot of inter that developers think that this could be another important uh, piece of of a funding puzzle that um, then it builds more momentum. I think for that. And I guess I also just curious about where we stand with also the mayor coming and that, you know, is the city also hosting this with us? Uh, Keith, you're here, you're from the planning. I mean, you are part of the inner sanctum there. It's, so it's the city, if this were to go out, is this kind of a joint thing between the city, maybe the planning department, but also us as well to sort of do some brainstorming around, you know, development in, in, in the valley um, around affordable housing. Keith, do you want to speak to that? I mean, I think we're, I think we can convene a meeting, whether it's um, at a regular meeting here um, or um, kind of a, another meeting, a separate meeting. I think that's totally, reason, totally reasonable. Um, we've done similar things in the past. Um, you know, uh, maybe. Uh, we would do it's an FYI uh, as the mayor saying, hey, we're convening this group, uh, but no expectation that, you know, should be able to to attend. Um, uh, yeah. 
I just had a thought. Yeah. Um, another part of this, well, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm a survey person. I love surveys. <laughs> so <laughs> I just had this thought of like sending out a survey to developers just randomly, you know, just like, you know, any any affordable housing developer that has um because not only that but i would even just want to know what barriers there are even beyond the money like is it other things so i think that um we had conceived of this as um a meeting with developers who aren't necessarily affordable housing developers in other words you know we're in contact with especially one of our affordable housing developers, but also others, but to, to get information from um, developers around what, what the costs are these days, um, how many units are they building? Have they ever, you know, what, what are their obstacles in terms of thinking about building more moderately or, or with um, subsidies? I think that was the information that we were looking for. Um, yeah, so definitely not just affordable housing, but just a range of people, right? A range of people. I think that, um, let me just say a couple things here. Um, I was contacted today by Alex Jarrett, who's source city councilor, but also the new president of the um, city council. He asked if the housing partnership or a couple of us, few of us, would come to a city council meeting at some point in the next few months and do a presentation about 10 minutes of what, what, are, what are the obstacles to building more affordable housing? What, uh, you know, something about, you know, the costs, how the costs have escalated, um, cost per, per, per square foot of building housing, just to educate the council, because not all of them and very few of them are really versed in what's going on with affordable housing. And it made me, it had me thinking a couple things. One is that we, one of our main, I think, uh, um, uh, things that we need to do more of is education. So here's an opportunity that he brought to me directly around going to the city council and educating them um, regarding these issues. Um, I thought, um, well, this is so, sort of an aside, but I thought of turning that presentation into an op-ed because we also haven't done an op-ed in quite a while around affordable housing and costs. Um, but back to his contact to me, education, even educating the city council. And I think that our idea about contacting developers was to get information from them to inform us more deeply about how they're thinking about this issue, just the housing crisis in general, how they're thinking about it, and um, what we need to know that we might not even know right now, you know? Hi, Megan, I, I see you joined us in the middle of the discussion. It's nice to have you here, yeah. Okay, what are other people's thoughts? Well, I mean, that's a nice invitation, but I don't know if we are the if we are the group that's capable of providing that presentation um, unless we wait till unless we pitch it as a summary of what we learned from this, whatever we're going to end up doing with developers. Um, like, yeah, you know, Alex and I talked about a number of things. So then I I contacted him again and I asked him to tell me in writing exactly what he's looking for. So this is. This is just going to develop, yeah. So, 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 so I'll share that with you guys when I have it. Ace. Um, I don't have any other ideas about the developer mm -hmm. conference. I would like. I would also like some clarity of what Councillor Jarrett is asking for. Uh, if he is asking for just affordable housing barriers or housing barriers more generally, I know that we collectively have quite a bit of expertise on things like uh, small area FMAs and, you know, the trouble of 
the difficulty of using Section 8 vouchers in renting, um, and I think collectively we we have you know a, a fair amount that we can say with numbers about the difficulty of renting in Northampton. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know I know I personally have less information about buying housing in Northampton. Mm -hmm. He he and I touched on a number of different topics, including topics not not relevant to this. Um, so that's why I said to him, just remind me exactly what you're looking for. So I'm going to have to get back to you. He also brought up with me. He said, do you know what a community land trust is? Because he's very interested in having a further um, thinking about how do we build kind of middle of the road, you know, middle of the work kind of the kind of the workforce housing. And he said community land trust can really provide a vehicle for doing that. He sent me a um, document. It looks like it's very well put together. It's about 28 or 29 pages about community land trust. And I'm just going to forward that to all of you so we can discuss that more next month. Okay, so I'll have more information from him. Uh, I will forward that to you and um, then we will see. These are sort of half-formed ideas that just came to me around two o'clock this afternoon, so. All right, so back to the drawing board here. So. Uh, Laura has a hand. Laura, did you have a hand up? Go ahead. I do. Um, I would just note for the committee that Northampton uh, did have a community area land trust. This is sending me way back. It's probably 30 years ago. Um, that developed a duplex. Edgar, do you remember a duplex on, on South Street? Um, it was staffed at the time by staff from, from Valley Community Development. This is, this is way back. Um, so I just would mention that history. Um, and also say that Amherst um, has a pretty active uh, current uh, community land trust that could be worth a conversation if folks are interested in that model. It's a mm -hmm. challenging model, not that it's not a good model. Mm -hmm. um, but it has its its pros and cons. Um, I my suggestion uh, in terms of the city council is, if I were to have the attention of the city council for ten or fifteen or twenty minutes, I might really want to home in on things that they could impact as city councilors that would assist with affordable housing development in Northampton, mm -hmm. because. Right. There are so many components that are outside of perhaps their control, like, you know, the availability of transformers, the cost of switch gear. It's like those right. things are all true, but they can't really do anything about it. But there are some actions that they could take that have to do with zoning, the use of city resources that could either could could, you know, facilitate affordable housing work. So I would encourage yeah. um, the partnership to really kind of skew in the direction of things that they could have a meaningful impact on rather than just big global economics that, you know, they're there, but they can't do anything about. Yeah, that's an excellent point. And this would be an opportunity to, to kind of tailor what we say to that. Yeah. Is the duplex on South Street, is that still under community land trust management? You know, I, my guess is that the affordability restrictions, because back in the day, they tended to be like 15 years. I, I don't know what happened with the community land trust. I think it might have dissolved at some point. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Keith, you're, you're too new to know <laughs> somewhere in the archives and the <laughs> bowels of City Hall. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it might have dissolved. And it would be, again, before it's recreated or revived, it would be interesting to follow and see what, what actually happened with that entity. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure it's gone. Okay. Thanks, Laura. Sure. Yeah, you hold a lot of institutional knowledge. God. A huge <laughs> amount. Thank you very much. We appreciate You're it. You're welcome. So let's go back now to um, what, what step are we going to take next? We had a number of ideas, a survey, um, inviting people to this meeting um, and starting with just maybe just two or three um, developers and um, having some sense, of course, of what we're going to ask them. Um,
where should we go from here? Well, I mean, I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that if we're going to use, you know, the surveys or the meetings is sort of like a fact finding, sort of gathering information, I think it would, the next logical step would be to take what we find and put it in like a, some easily, quickly distributable, you know, quick point fact sheet that we could give the city council and say, listen, we talked to, as the housing partnership, we, you know, we had a hunch, but we talked to these developers and we had this many developers and here's all the things they complained about. You know, is it mm -hmm. regulations? Is it lack of, you know, cost? Is it, you know, whatever it is, I think that would really give, you know, that's the bone, the meat to put on the bones of our ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and I think would be kind of a logical next step and really show, you know, that way, if, you know, we don't need to rely on one random city councilor Googling a community land trust. We can say, hey, a community land trust might address two out of the 20 things we just listed or whatever mm -hmm. it may be. And, and the housing trust fund would help with X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that would be great. It's going to, it would be like a snapshot, right? Because it's, it's, um, it's not static. Exactly. I know, Laura, we've, we've, we've mentioned this to you before, but, you know, it strikes me that, you know, when Valley CDC does projects, there are 30, 24 units, 30 units, 18 units, and there are no other that I know of. Um, I don't think there are any other sort of small apartment buildings being built in Northampton and I really really want it's wonder zoning <laughs> it's zoning is it yeah it is uh-huh in most cases so with we, we tend to use either a 40b or 40r kind of special zoning provisions that allow for greater density mm -hmm. for the construction of affordable housing that a market rate developer might not have access to so mm -hmm. You know, it depends where you're building, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, that that zoning definitely limits how many multifamily units you can put on any given um, plot of land, depending on where it is in the city. Mm -hmm. And I would just like to point out, we should add that into all of our anything we give to the city council, right? Because that's their purview is zoning. Exactly right. That's something that they could actually write, uh, kind of like. Uh, yeah, do something about it. Right. All right. So let's go back. We could we could decide tonight we're going to invite three developers to our next meeting for an open discussion. Three might be a lot, but Two. depending on how much they have to, to share about. But I, I'm in support of us just sort of getting this going. I yeah. think inviting three means we'll get one, frankly. Oh, that's mm -hmm. true. <laughs> I'm already here. No. <laughs> right? I don't think we necessarily need a lot of preparation for it because we're not even sure the questions we want to ask because we don't know what we don't know. So it could be a, an open discussion where we say, here's who we are. We want to know what the op what other obstacles are to construction to um, you know to building more units to dipping your feet into affordable housing etc what's the state what's the state of this in Northampton today from your point of view right and I would just I think we could open it to those developers and saying hey listen we all know what exactly the problems are <laughs> right it's not a mystery. Yeah, it's just we we want to put together a collection of information that's just more than you know its actuality that we can give to the city council and maybe they'll do something about it because we all know what the problems are. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So do they, and so does Laura. It's just we got to get it to the people who could do something about it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So, so shall, we, shall we try this? Edgar yes, um, Edgar, Edgar. Uh, yeah, I really do like uh, Gordon's and um, Spencer's idea about um, uh, really collecting uh, the information for for you know this potential uh, um, session that we have with developers, um, um, but also we could um, sort of I think we can build we could start building. Uh, with what we have already from our report a few years back, and we could say we could say something like, "This is what we found out back in 2018 or 2019, whenever we uh, made that report available, and this is what you know we know now, what's happening now, and what developers are telling us." So here's here's what we found out, um, and I'd love to like now. I'm curious. I want to go back to that uh, report. And see, you know, some of the things that actually um, the city has accomplished in terms of um, uh, breaking down some of the barriers and what things we're still working on and what things, you know, uh, could uh, could improve. So I, I really love the idea of actually coming to the city council in the future with, you know, just a little bit more informed um, sort of report. Yes, totally. All right, sounds like there's uh, not a lot of objection to inviting some developers for next time, maybe maybe two if we can get them. Um, I can go ahead and do that. I mean, I would take the responsibility of doing that. Well, do we know who they might be? I see Laura suggested somebody in the, in the chat. Yeah, Laura suggested Shaw Perry of Sunwood Developers. I think they're they're doing that small development right up, right up near Hospital Hill, right, Laura? right now yeah that's right they did and they also yeah. did the co-housing development at uh village hill which is i think about 28 units and that he did the one on barrett street there's like a little cluster of new buildings oh yeah yeah barrett street. Right. right when you said like who's doing the small scale yeah a few people that just popped to mind right i'm not sure keith who's doing the one um down off of the in the holly street area do you know where i mean the one that was kind of controversial <laughs> oh right the um the six half condos that that took yeah. place one right i don't i don't know who either that developer yeah. is right um, but you can see people are trying to use the already fairly progressive zoning bylaws that the city has put in place and it's not For sure controversy um, sure. who is the who is working on the um the ones that are over in florence that are going um i don't know the name of the street um it's like as if you're going towards um grow food northampton and then you you sort of go off to the left where the the, the monument is and then mm -hmm. there's like on the left there's like an old house there and they're going to build it into a strip. I was, I, I went to uh, some meeting where I was watching the builder discuss those plans. Um, maybe Melissa knows something about that. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> at that one. Um, uh, really? So I was just thinking I would, but they did have a planning board meeting and it got approved and it was a while ago now and that's probably what you were at and um is that park street i don't know the name park of the street, street it could very well be park street um, yeah. while you guys are talking i uh, may take a look here and see if i can find oh that. i know what you're talking about yeah right next to the vfw right right next to the vfw yes. yeah yes. yeah yeah, yeah. 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 but and what about what about other developers like, I mean, what do people think about something like Kiter? I mean, they're huge in this area right now. I don't know if they'd have an interest in this or, um, I mean, does anybody else come to mind who might be a good ask? I was just trying to know who that builder is that's building that on Park Street. I like the design, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Kiter would be good to invite um they're actually 
they they keep them pretty busy at Smith College. Um, yes, they're very busy. They're huge in this area right now. But I they mean, do they a are lot everywhere. Of stuff. Yeah, they do a lot of stuff elsewhere too. They're everywhere. Yeah. Um, Just as, as we think about who to invite, I, I know the optimum we'd like to get at least three, but I think you should extend it to more because inevitably no one, not everyone's going to be able to participate. Mm -hmm. So it would be good to have, try to get as diverse a, a, a range of developers. Yeah. I mean, and, and Laura, I, I guess we can count on you being asked that with more of the nonprofit focus, but the some of the more um, for-profit entities as well. Um, Did you have any ideas, Gordon? I don't know the developer world. I know Laura. <laughs> and I know the community builders and I know, you know, Wayfinders does a lot of building as well, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. O'Connell Group says we're redeveloping on uh, church on Holly. Okay. Edgar, did you have any something else? Uh, yeah, well, I have uh, well, one comment I would love to help uh, with um, uh, the logistics of, of the meeting. But also, I was wondering, and I'm sorry to put you on the spot, uh, Laura, but I was wondering if you would be willing to facilitate that meeting or if anyone asked yet, but I think you would be great. <laughs> I, I, I leave that to the group. I don't want to just, you know, overstep. So it's up to you guys. I'll do what you want me to do. Well, um, yeah, I just, uh, I don't want to, well, I'm told you, but um, I just, just suggesting, um, just because, uh, especially because. No, I, I mean, yeah, Laura, you, you would be great. And I'm, uh, you know, but even if you're not, if you don't feel that that's your place, it would be helpful to have you consult with us on what would be the agenda, how to craft the agenda so that we have, so we don't just sit around and stare at each other, but we have specific questions we want them to speak to or issues. Okay, um, so shall we plan to try to do this for March or for April? A good question. I mean, it kind of depends on what, who's out, who's available, I guess. I mean, we could be flexible, if, but we could. Yeah. Could people please email me if you think of other developers who might be good to include? Just email me. There's no reason we have to take up more time here. All right. So now would be kind of the time to be doing this before they get busy. You know, the weather's going to change and everything else. So, mm. um, you know, now is really the time to do it. Um, and I would say that if we're going to take the time to put the information together, Mm -hmm. um, and keep it simple. Um, April would be safer than March for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just writing down what Melissa did. I just looked up that project when, so I just sent through who that developer is. And I must say, Laura, I think in, in response to what you had um, put in the chat, I don't I personally don't know the difference between a developer and a builder. Could you, could you, sure. Sure. Could you edify sure. that? Yeah. Um, and some companies do both. Actually, O'Connell Group is a good example. O'Connell Group does development. They have a wing that does building, which is Western Builders, which builds things. And they have a property management wing. Um, so a builder typically will build what someone else has planned. So someone else has put together the property, the zoning, and then and a set of design team, a set of plans, and the builder comes in and executes them. And so it can be a very different skill set than kind of originating a development. Right. So 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 a builder wouldn't necessarily know some of the obstacles because the developer would have would have um, kind of laid that all out. They may or may not. I mean, again, mm -hmm. there's it's a there's a, some crossover, but the kind of pre-development work, pre-construction work, mm -hmm. is its own set of things. And I think that's what you're asking about because without mm -hmm. that, you don't generate the opportunity for mm -hmm. builders to build things, unless it's right. very small scale. I mean, builders, a lot of builders just do 
one house on spec, you know, the owners at that house hire them and they build it. But the kind of multifamily uh, affordable housing development that you're talking about, usually you have a development entity who's then putting it all together and hiring a builder to build it. Okay. Thank you. Let's try, let's, let's have a target date of April um, in terms of that, that'll be April Fool's Day. April 1st, I think, will be the day where, where, where we invite folks. That will give us uh, a little bit of time to, um, to invite, and I'll start working on that and to develop more of what we want to ask. Does that make sense? Okay. Somebody's not on mute and is having a conversation in the background. I don't know what. All right. Well, this sounds like a good way to go. People are okay with this. It's it's hard for me to tell. Okay. Yeah, I so, think I think it, March comes up too quick. We have a short month, so it's not enough time to figure out a list and yeah. plan for the meeting and then get people to RSVP. I mean, it'd be great. It could be March, but I don't think we're going to pull it off. Yes, exactly. All right. I'm going to start working on these, who we can contact and try to start contacting people with that idea. And please, uh, let's work on a survey um, in between now and then. We can share it next month. All right. Okay, so let's go on, please. Agenda item. Oh no, is is um is Megan still here or did she leave? Oh, uh, Carmen, Megan is not, but Amy um, Landry from uh, Habitat is here. She's on the phone. Uh, oh, okay. She, uh, I think she was here um, earlier, but she was unable. Um, uh, I guess we didn't see her, um, but um, she is on the phone. And if you're willing to listen, uh, she can speak. Yes, Amy, do you want to go ahead? Hi, everybody. Thank you. Are you able to hear me? Yes. We can hear you. Great. Thanks, all. I, my apologies. I, I logged on as you were just approving minutes. I had a hard time with my video this evening. Um, so uh, Amy Landry from Pioneer Valley Habitat. And just wanted to let you all know that um, we, we're in the process of, of pre-planning for building a house on Woodland Drive. Um, it was not originally in our construction pipeline for this year, uh, but due to, due to an environmental issue with, um, with our project in Montague, uh, we bumped ahead the Woodland Drive um, property as well as a property in Greenfield. We're planning at this point to build a single family, two story, three bedroom, energy efficient home um, using a redesign at 140 Woodland Drive, um, slated to break ground this spring. And we're looking for a letter of support for, uh, from the housing partnership. Uh, we will be applying to, uh, for about $50,000 in CPA funding for this project. About 50,000, okay. Is this uh, the- going for 50. Is this the um? Is this the Woodland Drive where there was originally two homes that were that were um, suggested, but um, it was it was brought down to one, right, Keith, because of neighbor neighborhood stuff. I uh, believe yes. Okay. All right. Well, we can certainly write such a letter of support, right? No problem. I'll write it, and I'll send it off to Megan. Thank you. And would you like me to send you the, the project details? That would be really great. Yes. Great. Oh, we have a one pager, so I will forward that to you. And I, I appreciate okay. it. And I appreciate you uh, letting us break into the meeting. OK. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Great. We're happy to do it. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Uh, Carmen, can we just take a vote on that? If there's uh, to get yeah. some unanimous support, if there is any. OK. Who would who approves a uh, writing letter of support for Woodland Drive for Habitat? Spencer? Yes. Uh, can we can we have a motion and then a second, please? Uh, I so move. 
Second. second. Oh, okay. one second. All right. Can we do a hand hand vote, Keith, or do we have to do a voice vote? Yeah, it's fine. Those in favor. Those in favor. All opposed. Okay. It's <laughs> unanimous. Great. Thanks. Thanks for reminding me of that. Let's go on to number six, next steps for municipal affordable housing trust fund. Uh, is there anything to say about that at this point? Um, Carmen, can I interject? Yes. So I, mean, I think um, we, we all talked about um, bringing the uh, mayor in. And I think um, when I reached out to her, um, at least for when I when I did, uh, the next two meetings were kind of out of um, with budget budgeting, and then uh, I think with scheduling, she wasn't able to make it. Um, and I think really, um, I think the partnership just needs to take a stance and write a letter to her, gather all the information, and kind of bring it to her. And I've had this. Um, um with a, another um mission is that you know um we're the housing partnership is an advisory committee mission to the the mayor uh, and she wants she trusts you all to kind of make these decisions and to do the research and i think um if sounds like the partnership is is done for for this uh and so that's your position you know write write a statement put all your information in there and get it to her. Um, I don't think she's going to come and we ask her her opinion. She wants your opinion. Um, and I think you guys are kind of unanimous about that. So, um, yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, we understand. That makes sense. I okay. think that, you know, I think that Hannah was going to, but she can't be here today, say something about the trust fund. But I do believe that um, taking these steps towards inviting some developers to our meeting and asking our questions um, uh, may give us more information towards, um, you know, the development of this or not. So I think we should just leave that be for the time being, go on with these other agenda items, and we can always come back to it at the next meeting. Is that all right? All right. Yep. Ace, you are on. Uh, great. Um, so uh, I have two updates. Um, I'll cover the short one first. Um, technically, it's not on the agenda, but uh, at last meeting, um, Hannah and I went and met as a subcommittee to uh, talk about the status of the Burgersby bill. Um, each of us uh, reached out to um, one of our representatives uh, to see what the status was and what we could do to move things forward. Um, I reached out to Senator Comerford, uh, who said that because the bill is still in the housing committee, um, what the best thing to do would be to um, write to the chair of that committee uh, for advocacy, um, either as a partnership on the whole or as individuals. Um, and Hannah may have more information on that next time. Um, the other bigger thing is the letter to the editor about the transfer fee. Um, I believe I have permissions to share screen, so I'm going to share that letter now. Uh, okay. And I will also post the link in chat in case it is easier for folks to navigate to that on their own. Um, everyone should be able to suggest edits, um, which uh, we can then go through of uh, approve or not. Um, so here is the transfer fee in question. Um, if you want to suggest edits, uh, but don't have uh the capacity to do that yourself um let me know and i can suggest edits and then we can go through them and talk about things um overall this is meant as an informative 
here's what trans here's what the transfer fee bill means. Uh, here's the money that you know we would have generated in past years. Here's the impact. Um, I think it's a little light on why it is important. I'm kind of taking it as read that funding housing is important, um, but very open to changes. Um, what would be the best way to do this? Would it make sense for you, Ace, to read this out loud and us go through it together? Or would it make sense? Well, what do you think is the author? What do you think? Um, given that the speed at which I read aloud is about a tenth of the speed at which I read <laughs> with my eyes, um, I don't think that's a very efficient option. Um, but I think, honestly, what might be best is if we, you know, gave like five or ten minutes for folks to read it through to make some suggestions and then reconvene verbally to talk out changes, ideas, uh, that sort of thing. Okay. I'm having trouble seeing the bottom of the um of the um oh there we go. Uh, yes, Gordon. I just want I, I'm people are ready to discuss. I just wanted to know I'm ready. <laughs> oh, got it. But I do I can comment as well, but I'll, I'll give it another minute unless folks are all ready. <clears throat> Maybe they can raise their hand if they've read it and they're good to go. <laughs> I'm, I'm good to go. You can start talking about it. Yes. I, I just want to say, I commend you, Mace. This is really great. This is a great start. It is. A great letter. And I also think that maybe we should be thinking, yeah, this is not, um, it's not a letter. It's an op-ed. I think that's what you said as well, because there are there are uh, word, limit, word limits on what you can put in a letter. You get a little bit more space if you're doing it as a, an op-ed. Um, I think, and just in terms of... Um, where it could be beefed up. I think, I mean, it's in there, but it's not really clear how this direct, how the trust of the city of Northampton could directly use this to seed affordable housing and in, in making the case for that. And I think if you go back, to, if you scroll up to the top again, because sometimes you don't want to, you don't want, you don't want to bury the lead. Sometimes people read things, they'll read the first paragraph and then they'll skip it. Um, but really to emphasize that right away, um, how it really could benefit and make uh, housing more accessible to people on the lower income uh, scale um, in this community, because everyone, and I think it's not hard to people to realize Northampton is, is a, is a, you know, it's a victim of its own success because it's people want to live here and drives the price up. So, you know, this is, this is, this is affordable housing, which is targeted to a certain economic group. And not right. just it's not just that it says that we give money to the city of Northampton. People are going to say we'll spend it foolishly, right? 
<laughs> right. Mm. Um, so I agree with you about uh, bearing the lead and wanting a stronger opening. I was not sure how to write a stronger opening than what I had. Um, so I think that's a great suggestion of Gordon's. Um, and also one of my thoughts is I think I think in some of your paragraphs, there's there's a little too much detail, and I think some people would get lost in that. And that's another reason why I like Gordon's suggestion. I'm wondering if we could have just a small subcommittee, um, Ace, to help you and to give you um, suggestions about this um, through Google Docs or something like that. Okay. Is there a reason that we shouldn't do this as a committee tonight? There is there is no 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 reason that we shouldn't. Yes. Um just you know, we, we do have half an hour left in, in yeah. meeting to to do things. And, you know, I am of the opinion that, you know, the sooner things get out, the 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 better with the okay. speed of government being what it is. Gotcha. All right. I would um a couple comments <clears throat> and and one of which in and Ace I'm Everybody has their own writing style, right? So I'm going to comment on your writing style. But I think that along with what Gordon was saying is I think since it's a newspaper and it's an op-ed, I would just open with Northampton has an affordable housing problem and everybody knows it, right? You know, uh, you gotta I love grab, it. Yeah. You know, grab their attention. And I was th also trying to write in my head what a, what a nice opening. And it kind of follows from that. And we had... And and the governor has just proposed a, a, a really important tool that will help us address it, right? Right, exactly. Oh, and, yes. and to just and then because, you, and then everything that follows, you know, everything you've done after that follows and supports the argument we're making. Right. Exactly. Taking two lawyers around <laughs> making the case here. Right. <laughs> I, because otherwise, people are just going to. I mean, it's great details, but people are going to skip it because they're like, "Oh, okay, whatever." But you know. Now it's like people are going to think about it. And I would even say, you know, okay, Maura Healy proposed this. I would even take where we talk about one section a lot, the, the, the sentence that begins one section. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. And maybe even move that down because what you want to say is we have a problem. The governor's offer to, has a bill proposed. And hey, listen, the Northampton Housing Partnership has been working on this for eons. And here's what we, we think we should use a housing trust. And then the rest of it is about why we should use a housing trust. Yes. Maybe even drop that $3 million number up there early. Uh, which $3 million? Down below. You mean the one that's in the bond bill? Uh, the, one that you, the, the one the one that you calculated right the one that you calculated. oh i see yeah. you know yeah. just saying you know how they the teasers you know save up to this amount you know yeah. something would, something that catches their attention like we could have generated up to three million dollars just a thought yeah i and and ace i love it but i wouldn't even nobody gives two hoots that the bill's multifaceted <laughs> nobody you know it, it's it is no one's gonna read it i just i think we got to say listen northampton this is why we want this right and we have an affordable housing problem we we have this affordable homes act why is it going to help northampton right Bullet point one had this been in effect for the past whatever years we would have already raised 3.2 million bucks yeah Right. Like those are the salient hit you in the face points and yeah. then people can read the details. Yeah. And that and that other communities have had them for a number of years up and running. Yeah, exactly. right? yeah definitely reference Amherst because right. we hate those jerks. Uh, I mean, yeah. there, there are contemporaries <laughs> the on the other side of the river. <laughs> Northampton but, is behind the times. Behind the times. But I really like what I would say. I suggest is not so much referencing Amherst and it's great saying Boston and the Cape and Martha's Vineyard has one too mm -hmm. but I think what you want to say is kind of like what Gordon was saying is that listen 
everybody likes to think that Northampton is, you know, that hippie beatnik town that everybody moved to back in the day. And it ain't that anymore. Right. We are a, a, a town, a city yep. that, like Gordon said, is really expensive. And look what these other really expensive cities have done. Nantucket, they've got one. They're really expensive. Boston, uh -huh. they've got one. They're really expensive. Amherst, they got one. They're really expensive. That sort of thing. Okay. Um, good point. Very good point. Should I? Uh, should that section stay where it is? Should it be moved sooner? Um, I think it is important to define what the transfer fee bill is and does because it's not intuitive. Um, I think it, it's important, but I think you want to, you know, in assuming that people who have no idea about housing, I would move the 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 big number of things up first and the things that are going to be relatable right because if someone's reading this and says well we could have like okay boston and all these other places have it and we could have saved 3.2 million dollars okay what do, what does it mean for us to do that right and so you get the people's attention and then you tell them what that we have to do because otherwise they're just flipping through the gazette looking at the obits right i mean Right. And and so I, I think, you know, you, you gradually, because it's a complex issue, and so you want to start with the easier salient stuff that's going to get people's attention and then say, okay, you know, you, you, it's that old adage I use all the time, you know, when you want to boil a frog, you, you, you know, you don't start it hot, you, you bring it up. And so, because people oh, might not even care what the fees are right right so so i think just following on what you're saying that the next two paragraphs is starting with first and then governor healy i think that i think that i think they're too detailed like i personally think that yes we need to explain what the transfer fee is but i think it needs to be done in a way that's maybe a little bit more general i don't know if other people agree with me but and i just uh, i just want to i just want to throw out here that this idea to me would be more appealing than rent control probably right because well this is a lot more doable than rent control no right. doubt about that yeah um okay right. uh so and might i suggest and i i am 100 percent on board with you ace that government and, and committees and beginning committees is not great, but I'm more than happy if you want to work together on this to then come, now it doesn't even have to wait till next month, but just because I think you want to say, you know, it's almost like you want to read it as a bullet point and then maybe get into the details like Carmen was saying later, because 90% of the people reading this, they're not going to care. All they want to know is one, am I going to have to pay more money? Mm -hmm. Right. And then you say no, because it's only if it's over the medium home sale price. And congratulations if that's the case. Right. And so I think there's a lot of things in here we would want to. That are almost like second discussion points. Mm -hmm. right? So first discussion is why this is a great idea and it's not going to not going to cost you any money. It's going to help the community and it's easy to implement. Right. That's all the people that read in the Gazette are going to care about. Mm -hmm. And then we can. If people have better questions, or, or not better, but more in-depth questions, you know, maybe we, we could put something up on the, I don't know if we have a website or like a fact sheet or something like that, you know, on the city's website that they mm -hmm. could look at. But that way, because we just want to, I read this as driving support up for what we want to do, right? And mm -hmm. that's all. Hey, so I... Wait, I have another thought. You know yeah. those, you know those um, screens that they put up where you can flash information on the screens, like in the downtown area and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, like people when they're on the bike trails, they get flashed like little advertisements or something like that. Like just, <laughs> just like do like a an insert to like just have those little facts that are really like important facts, but details. 
um but they're they're powerful important details so like maybe there's a way we could like get the word out in some sort of way with like slogans on those things or something and get a little mm -hmm. campaign going i don't know <laughs> ace um i still fall back on my idea that you might need a little more time than tonight to revise this what are you thinking at this point well um so I guess my expectations for this discussion were a little different um, because I'm hearing a lot of uh, general suggestions of way to improve as opposed to direct edits to the document right now, um, mm -hmm. which I was expecting more of the latter um, because, you know, I do I generally agree, you know, things can be moved around, things can be punched up, um, but that's difficult for me to do on the fly. Um, yeah. Additionally, this coming month, I have a very limited amount of time. Um, if if someone wanted to take this over, punch it up and bring it back for the next meeting, I would be very open to, you know, handing that over, giving access. I don't have, you know, pride about things being the way that they are. And I am mm -hmm. at heart an academic, which is probably why it's a little dry. Um, <laughs> but, I just want to uh, say it's really outstanding. It really is outstanding. It's it's a solid first draft, yeah. um, and uh, you know, and it is also a first draft. Right, I, so, I agree. It's it's hard to edit as a group like this, and I would yeah. I would you know love the pre to see the you know accept all these edits and then send it around. But maybe we could just authorize by vote a a small group of one to of two to three people that might have authority to finalize this. We all know what what the point of this is, and then we can just send it without having to wait for another meeting. And we and then so we can circulate what gets sent. So everyone can can have a see what gets, it'll, it'll hopefully be published. So um, yeah, um, Keith is our resident expert on uh, uh, municipal law. Is, is that right. something we can do? Give pre approval mm -hmm. and just say you know uh, the Edited. subcommittee has approval to edit and send this out, or do we need? full committee approval on the final draft i think you need full i don't think you need approval on the final draft i mean I think you say you know approve the letter with the you know recommended edits that's probably fine yeah i mean i just want to say who's going to complain i mean <laughs> um and it's not like we're drafting legislation in in, in secret here so <laughs> for the city yeah so again it's just, I mean, it's just an op-ed yeah, so I go back to my initial thought of putting it on Google Docs and sharing it. And I mean, I'd be willing to be on this committee. Spencer, I hope you're going to say that you will too. Happily. If they, okay. I, I encourage everyone to punch the heck out of this up. Yeah. Um, that phrasing was odd, but uh, yes, like I said, <laughs> I don't have, uh, I don't have ego about this getting changed. Yeah. One quick cool. edit, just in, when you get to the based on historic real estate, data, as I, I kept reading this a few times, and I wasn't sure whether you were referring to Northampton's median sale price or a statewide. So just to make that clear. Oh, right. Um. So uh, this one is Northampton's median. Yeah, and that would be important to, to make, say that in that right up front in this. Yeah. Sentence. Uh, like okay. there. Yeah. Yeah. So we're deciding that. Um, Ace is going to share this with me and Spencer, and we're going to punch it up like Ace Ace has given us the directive to do. Um, and is, then, is anyone else interested in being on this subject? Yeah. Anyone uh, else? Yeah. I trust you'll do a good job. I, I, you know, I'm I'm happy to help edit. I like editing, but I think too many cooks can get in the way. <laughs> and I trust you guys are going to do a great job. Uh, Gwen, I saw a hand from you. Oh, I was just going to say, like, I don't know how much time I have this month, but I can get in here and leave a few comments at least, and then you can see them. Sure. Um, I know I have very limited time this month, um, but uh, yeah. But I think, Ace, you've done a lot of work on this. You did the bulk of it, and my, my own experience is when I write stuff like this, I usually have to take some stuff out out you know rearrange etc but you you have done the hard work here i think with three people working on this and editing it in the way that spencer and you were suggesting that we can do it fairly quickly yeah so thank you so much though for working on this yeah 
Yeah. There's a lot of stuff in here. Always glad to have a first draft. Yeah. Um, well, in the that data. Case, uh, motion to approve what comes out of the subcommittee to be sent to the Gazette. <laughs> motion to second. <laughs> no, first, if no, no order. <laughs> motion. Uh, yeah. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Second, right. Okay. Uh, is anybody not in favor? Everybody's in favor. All right. So we've approved it. Excellent. Uh, great. Right. Um, Carmen, I have your email address. Um, yep. Spencer, I don't believe I have yours. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. Um, but if it's on the Northampton website, I can find it and use that. I just put it in your document. Ah, thank you very much. <laughs> I will great. bear it forthwith. All right. Thank you again, Ace. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you, Ace. <laughs> Good stuff. That was re that's really good. Thank you. So, um, so we have a little committee around the op-ed. We've decided we want to shoot for April first for a um for a smaller um developer meeting um to be uh kind of folded into the housing partnership meeting. We'll invite them for that. Um. I'm going to start contacting a few of these people that were suggested, see if they'd be interested in that. And then I think it would be important to have um, some idea, beginning idea of what we want to ask. I don't think that there needs to be a lot because I think with Laura there too, I think that we will be able to just go with this conversation and you know where we're going to go, but we'll talk more about that next month. So that can be on our March agenda, further planning, and I'll have more information about um, reactions from developers. But you may want to have before you invite developers a more a more specific sense of what our uh, uh, objectives are and maybe some of the questions. So it may be they go hand in. You may not want to wait to March to talk about that. We can work on the flesh out the agenda, but you may want to maybe may, and Laura's left, but maybe Laura will be humbly willing to give you some thoughts about what could be the pitch. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Or anyone else that has some work knows developers and what 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 might attract them to a meeting. Very good idea. All right. All right. So, other business unanticipated. Does anybody have anything? I guess that brings our meeting to a close if we can have a motion to do so. I so move. Second. Thank you everybody for coming. It was so nice to see you.